So you guys remember how marked up my steel is that I've been shooting for a million years? Pretty mild steel. So here at Rex Reviews, we have a lot of experience dealing with inexpensive target improvisation. If you're a cheapskate like me, you like to think you can get away with finding all kinds of creative ways of coming up with the superior rifle target. And over the years, we've tried a lot of different things, ranging from different steel plates that you get from guys you know in the industry. Maybe they work on the railroad and they got some old plates laying around. Uh, maybe they work in other industries and they got all kinds of scrap steel. And we try to make use of that stuff over the years uh, in inventing various different configurations configurations of rifle targets. However, if you've seen the videos, uh, these things get mangled up pretty bad. And the amount of work and effort behind the scenes that goes into setting these things up, maintaining them, continuously grinding them back down to flat, trying to hammer them straight again, and also just shooting the heck out of the stands, having to drag the target back to the shop, uh, weld it back up, uh, make a new stand for it, go back out there, drag it up the butte, set it back up. That stuff is incredibly time consuming and a lot of creative language has been used in the field when dragging giant mangled pieces of steel back off the butte so you can weld it back up again and drag it back up there. So for those of you guys that want more of a high speed, low drag option, you can take a look at these targets from shootsteel.com. So AR500 steel is a high carbon, abrasive resistant alloy steel uh, that generally offers pretty good resistance to sliding and impact abrasion. Uh, it's the high carbon content in the alloy that kind of increases the hardness and toughness of the steel, making it an ideal material for applications that require high impact or abrasion resistance. And in the industrial world, high carbon steel alloys like these are especially suited for use in mining, wood products, and material handling industries. Uh, applications that include dump truck bottom side stuff like that, liners, chutes for dryers, gravel crushers, tree cutter blades. Uh, wear plates and vibrating conveyors, stuff like that. So this type of steel offers a high value to people who are shooting at it. <laughs> it's going to hold up to penetration and abrasion very well. It'll certainly be a huge difference when compared to just standard mild steel. And for those of you who might be using a steel that's a bit more mild, you're going to find that uh, you're going to see some interesting things out there in the field. Uh, not only are you going to get pock marks and divots and cratering and warping of the steel, uh, if you're using heavy stuff, you can actually have complete penetration, partial penetration, like we've seen back with the M33 ball ammo uh, through the half-inch plate before. Not to mention uh, the tooling required to really cut this stuff to make a nice smooth edge is incredibly difficult. Even if a guy has a torch, uh, I've made a lot of different steel targets over the years, and uh, you get real nasty jagged edges and that might not seem like a big deal because you're only going to be shooting at it. But you got to remember you're going to have to set this thing up too. And uh, after enough times dragging this thing up the hill or trying to drag it out of the back of a pickup, it's going to tear up the, the bed of the pickup horribly just due to the jagged metal edges. Also, it's going to slice up your hands. You could potentially get infected. There's just a lot of stuff, entire worlds of trouble that a lot of folks don't think about or when they're thinking about just custom making their own steel targets. So that's one of the advantages of finding an outfit that actually specializes in making factory steel targets that are of the proper grade steel that are not going to be mangled and deformed and destroyed. So the guys from ShootSteel.com actually got a hold of me and uh, they said, hey, what's up with the steel you're shooting at, man? Well, this like, what is that stuff? Even where'd you get it? And I told them I was uh, trying to recycle garbage that I find in the field and whatnot. Mm. And uh, they had a little bit of a chuckle, but they were kind enough to offer. They said, hey, you need to find out the advantages. This AR500 plate that we make, it's very nice. And I, I was skeptical because after shooting the legs off of so many of my own targets that I thought I engineered pretty well, uh, I, I thought that why would a guy want to spend a little bit more money on uh, something that's factory made when I can just go and scrap something together myself? And to be honest, uh, <laughs> you can look at not only the uh, quality of the material uh, is superior in when they use AR500 for the stand material and for all the other components that could potentially take around. They make sure they're using the proper grade steel for that. That is not going to be destroyed uh, anytime soon. That's going to outlast you by a long shot. You're going to wear out a lot of guns before you uh, do enough damage to these things to render them obsolete. But also, you can look at the designs. They've had a lot of experience trying to build a rifle target that's not going to require babying. So eventually, I told the guys at ShootSteel.com, yeah, go ahead and send me one of your targets there, and uh, I'll, I'll see how it works. Maybe, maybe there's something to it. 
And they said, well, which one do you uh, want to try? And I said, which one? Do you make more than one? <laughs> so I went on their website, and man, do they got a lot of stuff. Like a lot of different targets to choose from. If there's something different that you're looking for, I'm pretty sure they're going to make it. Uh, they make stuff for heavy-duty rifles, pistols, carbines, all different applications. Reactive targets, clangers that hang off of chains. They make the stands. And actually, that's a huge value, too, is just having a target outfit that builds a sturdy stand that's relatively easy to set up and is done. That's one of the hardest things to do is uh, contemplating different ways to make a swing set that when you shoot the legs off, it's still fine, you know. Uh, these things are built tough. So I'm excited to take these things out in the field and see how they work. And so from now on, if you see these targets that aren't all mangled up, these are going to be shootsteel.com targets. So I hope this was helpful to all those of you guys who are contemplating looking for trash out in the field. Maybe it's a lot less work and a lot less money in the long run if you factor in all the diesel fuel, the cussing, the sweating, the bleeding uh, that it takes to maintain and keep reassembling your recycled <laughs> mangled steel targets. If you just get one of these things, then you're pretty much done with it. going to be uh, very heavy duty stuff and it's going to take a lot of abuse. I do read the instructions. There's different thicknesses of targets and uh, different applications. Uh, you want to make sure that you get the, the right target for the right cartridge and you're, you're placing it at the right distance to ensure that it's going to last the longest. But I am really excited not to have to go out there and uh, bust my butt so much to set up just a standard course for the day. This is going to streamline my operation. And thanks a lot to you guys at ShootSteel.com. I can't wait to get the, some of the larger clangers. And I look forward to a lot less setup time on the targets and maybe a bit more trigger time behind the rifle. So you guys remember how marked up my steel is that I've been shooting for a million years? Uh, so some of these guys at ShootSteel.com uh, felt sorry for me. And they thought that maybe it was time for some new targets. And I'll tell you what, I got some neat stuff here, man. Uh, this is that AR500 plate steel. Uh, we got a few different ones, and I got some more on the way, actually. And uh, I'm digging it. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is, I think, what is that, 3 ace steel or something? So you got a spring-loaded mechanism here. This is a, like a pistol target right here. So, uh, can you also use carbines on it, I'm sure, or right, uh, rifles if you go far enough with the leverage of the stick here. Probably push it over unless you have it secured solidly, but I think I can shoot this with a pistol a bunch. Um, but uh, this deal is spring-loaded. It kind of keeps the target spaced away a little bit so it can clang nice. So that'll be pretty cool. And we have a couple of these deals. These are close-range rifle targets. You can hit them with a real powerful rifle and it uh, doesn't tear them up. And would you like to go ahead and demonstrate the rifle shot, sir? Let's give it a swift kick. See? And she pops back up. So we got spring-loaded mechanism here. And uh, knocks them back up. Got a little feet to keep it off the ground. Uh, and it's about yay big. We'll get the actual dimensions for you after we start shooting it more. Uh, this deal is kind of a plate. This is a super heavy duty, very simple base. Just interlocks, if you can see that. Two interlocking grooves. And you have an angle, in case you need to be on angled terrain or something, and uh, get it that way. But that should be pretty stout. That should last forever right there. Don't need uh, to ever replace any parts on that deal, ever. And then likewise, this is a little bit bigger. <laughs> A little plate here, about yay big for the rifles, and that one looks a little thicker. What is that? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So thanks to the guys at shootsteel.com. Uh, you'll be seeing how these things hold up. I think all that's going to tear up is the paint. AR500 is pretty stout stuff, and uh, actually shooting targets like this is going to be better, anyways. With mild steel, you get a lot of cratering over time. And that actually makes it difficult to spot exactly where you're hitting after a while, even if you keep painted. And also your peripheral splash, it'll uh, sometimes make the bullet fragments not go in a smooth direction all the way around 360. It'll, if it hits a divot a certain way, it might make it appear as if you missed off to one side or off to the other. So you'll get a lot of asymmetrical peripheral splash, which can be difficult to spot. 
Uh, so AR500 is going to stay smooth for a long time and uh, it should be real good for the applications if you're going to be doing a lot of shooting especially. So rock and roll. Like your finger or something. <laughs> My kingdom for a female model.